Citroen's hydropneumatic suspension system was unlike anything else on the road. By the time the CX arrived in 1974, Space Age styling met automotive engineering to create a driving experience straight out of the jet age. At least, that's how we like to imagine ourselves. However, in reality, much like a jet airliner, a small hydraulic leak can leave you grounded. Therein lies the reason this system was never widely adopted in the industry. It was perceived to be complex and unreliable. In reality, it is neither. During the 1970s, it was copied and licensed by Mercedes-Benz and Rolls-Royce. Mercedes put it into their halo car, the 6.9 litre W116 S-Class and Rolls-Royce used it in the Silver Shadow, among other cars. Some of the best of their day. The most common suspension systems found on cars at that time were some combination of coil springs at the front and either coils or leaf springs at the rear. This is a fine setup. It does the job perfectly adequately. Citroen's system does away with springs completely and replaces them with metal spheres with nitrogen-filled balloons inside. This nitrogen-filled balloon is able to compress under the hydraulic pressure and absorb the shocks of the road. With a traditional suspension setup, you have to choose between a car that rides soft, is comfortable, and one which handles well in the corners and perhaps rides a bit harsher as a result. The neat trick with Citroen's system is that it will do both. It wasn't thought possible to invent such a system. The man who penned it, Paul Maget, had no technical training and so was able to apply unconventional wisdom. The principle is simple. With increasing loads, the nitrogen gas pressure becomes higher. So you can have stiff suspension through the corners and soften it again on the straights. Is it perfect? No, it has its limitations. Humpback bridges, for example, can trick the system and feel awkward to drive over. For its time though, it was an incredible system, years ahead of the competition. Only now, with electronic active suspension, can we replicate what this relatively primitive hydraulic system was doing 70 years ago. The system was very briefly trialled on Citroën's Traction, before going into full production in 1955's groundbreaking DS. It was then used on Citroën's medium and big cars, all the way up to the withdrawal of the C5 exclusive in 2017. Over the years, it was updated and innovated, notably with the Hydractive system, where electronic sensors began to be added, allowing for adjustable sport and comfort modes, as well as finely adjustable heights for good and bad road surfaces. You may think the electronic sensors are where the system went wrong. I couldn't possibly comment. The CX uses its hydraulic system not just for suspension, but also for steering and braking. All three functions are supplied by the same reservoir of LHM, or mineral hydraulic fluid. The brakes are a power system in the true sense. Most cars use vacuum to provide boost. When you press the pedal in a CX, the system's hydraulic pressure essentially applies the brakes for you. There is very little pedal travel. It is essentially an on and off switch. In the DS and SM models, the brake pedal was actually a mushroom switch on the floor gently apply pressure to achieve braking. For this car, they toned back the quirky and attached the pedal to the mushroom, but it works just the same. The result is brakes which are very sharp and can catch new drivers off guard. It also makes for very stable braking, with even non-ABS equipped cars braking straight over a skid patch during testing. 
The third function to be fed from the car's hydraulic system is Diravi steering. This is Citroen's proprietary power steering system, which was first seen in 1970 on the SM. Diravi stands for Direction à Rappel à Servi, or Power Steering with Power Assisted Return. And that is just what it does. If you let go of the wheel, it returns to centre. Like the brakes, this takes getting used to. It is very sensitive, and you can sometimes forget that it centres itself while you're looking over your shoulder at a junction. Again, this is a true power system. Your inputs to the steering wheel merely instruct the hydraulic system on how much you want to turn. The steering wheel and the steering rack are not normally physically linked, but if the hydraulic system fails, there is a backup physical link. In fact, the steering is the first to go when the hydraulic system fails, followed by the suspension, and then finally the brakes. But the idea is you pull over when the steering goes. So what's it like to drive? Well, it feels like flying, or sailing, or maybe both at once. Most of the harshness of the road disappears beneath you. You know it's there because you can see other cars bouncing over bumps, but you feel nothing yourself. There is roll through the corners, of course. The pressure differential in the nitrogen isn't enough to solve this issue completely. The hydractive system of later Citroens was designed partly to combat that. The engine is completely ahead of the front wheels and canted forward about 30 degrees, which leaves it very front heavy. But this works well with the front wheel drive and the power steering which is only 2.5 turns lock to lock to make an old heavy car feel pretty nimble. The car is low, with a shape quite unlike anything else on the road, short of the DS or contemporary Citroen stablemates. It carries with it a lot of character everywhere it goes, and some polarizing opinion. Most people are happy to see it though, but some have no idea what it is. The CX still feels like the future, even at over 50 years old. Even if the future didn't turn out quite how Citroen imagined it, more fool the future. The CX project ultimately bankrupted Citroen, who were owned by Michelin at the time. The design work, tooling, a brand new factory at ulnay sous bois on the outskirts of Paris, proved too much for the firm's finances. By 1976, they were majority owned by rival Peugeot, who almost immediately began reining in Citroen's quirkier traits to form a model range more in keeping with its own traditional conservative fare. 